everyone. A very good evening, morning, and afternoon to all of you who have joined us today. Uh, I'm Rashika, and I'm very glad to be hosting this event today. So, uh, let me ask you a question: What does it mean to you when you hear the term industry-ready designer? Can someone let me know in the chat section? What do you mean? What do you understand when you hear the term? industry ready designer passionate physical product design right right cool so definitely does not mean that uh, you know you require any kind of licensing to get started so for me uh, it means a designer who is capable of adding value to a company or a brand or a product from day one through making a business thing to get started so for me uh, it means a designer who is capable of adding value to a company or a brand or a product from day one through making uh, business successful decisions proposing activities and framing the right problems for the organization and to help us take that step further in helping us becoming an industry ready designer we have satyam with us Satyam is a software designer living in India. He has designed features and experiences for many websites and online tools for various customers. He loves to debate, mentor, and learn from his peer. He would love to share his experience to help others get started or accelerate their careers. Satyam, a uh, very warm welcome to you, and thank you for doing this workshop with us. Uh, yeah, the stage is all yours. Beautiful introduction. Um, so. Um... before getting started um it's uh, i'll be very frank <laughs> that uh, you know when we when a product design terms you know enter in our ears um uh, you know there are two kind of things uh, which you know stuck in our mind there are two kind of product designers in the world okay one is the physical product designer i think uh, someone uh, has also mentioned in the chat and the other one are the digital product designers so uh, i am personally a digital product designer and in this workshop also we are talking about how to become an industry ready digital product designer and yeah also when i when i say industry ready uh, industry ready doesn't mean ki okay you are going to be a par excellence designer because that is something which can be achieved by practice by experience by having a great knowledge but uh, industry ready means is ki what is market expecting from you and what you are giving to the market uh, are those things are getting on the same table or not so this is something which uh, we are going to discuss like you know how you can become and into this whole workshop i'm going to give you some um, good bullet points and some pro tips how you can get started if you are new into the field and you know what are market expecting from you being a product designer and also you know Uh, the portfolios are the biggest uh, you know backbone of any product designer how you can maintain that how you can make it industry ready for you so we are going to discuss these particular things uh, in the workshop and uh, just allow me some time i'll just share my screen and we can get started so uh, guys before uh, you know directly getting into the topic let me introduce myself briefly i have although rashika has given a very beautiful introduction but uh, yeah so my name is satyam tiwari i am currently product designer at source fuse technology and i'm having around 5 years of experience till now started my journey in 2017 and you know i'm i'm a design mentor at adblist and design.org i used to you know i love to guide people uh, who want to get into the field who are new and who want some ideas about like what this field is i am a i am a tutor also i used to teach uh, different people i used to give mentorship to different uh, you know students i have taught around you know multiple uh, people who are having multiple backgrounds in the world and you know and they want to switch into ui ux um into my professional journey i have worked into multiple good and a complex fields also like cyber security e commerce e commerce is a pretty easy field uh, real estate uh, retail expansions etc and also i would love to you know go ahead with the things like in into this workshop also if you have any question you can just directly put it into the q and a and after this workshop we'll take it forward with rashika yeah 
so uh, let's get started and let's try to understand ki you know how you can become an industry ready uh, product designer but before that let's understand what is product design and who are product designers basically so i'll just go point by point here and i'll try to explain you guys ki you know uh, what are the thoughts of a product designer and you know what is product design according to the market and other things and would love to clear our doubts also with this particular slide so product design um, it's a very simple thing uh, people call it as a, a skill uh, but it's not true it's a myth to be very frank product design is actually a process okay so when you are making a product you know there are multiple kind of processes involved and product design is one of the process of making a product okay so what is product design it's a process of creating new products that meets user needs and business goal involving different requirement conducting different kind of interviews conducting research for you know whatever your product has been required and whatever your whatever your field is into and you know delivering things um, de delivering and making the product for the users in a very aesthetically functional and in a very useful way so this is something uh, what is a product design now people who do are product designer obviously but uh, you know uh, if if uh, someone asks me ki okay, how you can define product design like who are people those people so it's it's very simple we are the people who make product who design products which meets user needs we are the people who know our users way better than anyone uh unless you are the ceo or the stakeholder of the company so <laughs> uh and after that uh, you know we are someone who prepare a visually appealing product you know working with other technicians other engineers into the team to collaborate and make up this product uh on to a very good things and we are the people uh, who who are precisely a backbone of any product because you know when we talk about user flows when we talk about user journey when we talk about uh mind mapping we are the people who make it okay just to make that product more uh, you know more flourish more uh, more refined and in a very perfect way to present it to the users so we are the product designers so used to do uh, different things many people have this thing ki you know uh, there are two terms which are very much famous in the market right now which is ui ux and product so uh, many people ask it ki okay ui ux and the product are the same thing but it's not it's it's having a very slight difference okay I, i'll tell you that so when you are when you say that you are a ui and a ux designer that only means that you work in a design domain design department of that particular product okay when uh, when you are uh, making a product you are making a screen you are making user flows you are making hull mapping you are making uh, you know going through conducting another, another research interviews for uh you know your product or understanding about the requirements this is a thing which a ui ux designer do but product designers they do the same thing but in a way into which they can collaborate with the engineers they can test out different things they they can do gorilla testing they can do ab testing just to understand the ui they also get involved into the feedback round into the usability testing we call it in a in a professional way into the design field so this is a very slight difference that we are the uh, product designers are also a bit technically sounded uh, when, when it comes on development when it comes on engineering and a ui ux designer is a pure into a design field they work in the design department and uh, you know uh, they, their last step is always design handovering to the engineering department so this is the kind of a slight difference uh, into the market but uh, right now it's going on ki okay ui ux and products are same but it's not so i just want to clear a doubt on that so uh, if we go ahead let's understand about what market is expecting because you know people who are entering into design field right now are having a very good knowledge into you know uh, when it comes on ui when it comes on ux of uh, you know of any product of anything but uh, you know people are feeling out into this why because they didn't understand what market is expecting from them what uh, what your product has been required we as a designers we are a creative people uh, to be very frank like you know we have to accept the fact that we are a creative people and our mind never works uh, in the same direction uh, every second 
so we have to get that thing very clear that we once we are into into market once we are working as a designer into a market we need to match the market expectation in order to get into the field so that is something where many people are failing out and that's why they are you know getting into uh, these kind of uh, barriers like you know getting jobs getting their things done and other things so uh, let's understand ki what market uh, is been expecting from us so basically first of all uh, first of all we are from our blood cells creativity is something which market has always been expecting from designers like us okay the product designer the graphic designer and any kind of designer market has always been expecting creativity from us why they are expecting creativity because we are creative people and you know the market wants us the company wants their goal to be achieved creatively that's why they hire us because you know uh, if if creativity gone away from this thing then i think our job can be done by anyone in the market so that is something which uh, that that is the main differentiators for us so their creativity comes on a very big part for us now user empathy product designers are uh, you know uh, they should be able to understand they put themselves into the shoes of users to understand their needs their preferences their pain points this is something which uh, no, you know nobody can do ex- except stakeholder because you know those guys are the people who are having the concept of the pro- particular product or something but you being the second stakeholder in the company you have to understand what user wants what your product can give to the user what problem you are solving for the user you have to understand the pain points you have to understand the preferences of users not for the product okay the product has been made for the uh, for the users for the use of users so you so we as the product designers market is expecting from us ki we should understand the empathy of a user so that uh, they can get ahead of things and you can make a good better better designs of the product technical skills obviously um, you know uh, working on different softwares like photoshop illustrator or vxt and etc etc so you should know about working with uh, working on these particular product because theory is not sufficient in the market into any department not into design only so uh, let's next the next comes on the communication skills communication skills are preferably i'll say the most important parameters uh, of getting into a job first of all and getting users requirement collaborating with team members presenting your ideas you know receiving feedback having a effective communication with the clients it is very important for you you should have a good communication skill with the people because we as a designers we always face one thing in the market in, in our job every time we uh, you know uh, people sometimes never get what we are saying okay like you know if if there is a design we like it because it's having some new concept or a trendy concept and we think that it it will work in the market but it is hard for you to convince your stakeholders with this reason so you should have a better communication skills so that you can present your idea in a better way in their way what they want from them okay because uh, you have to convince other stakeholders who are more so over a layman when it comes to design things okay so communication skills are the biggest part uh, for you next after communication is it comes to problem solving skills because we as a product designers our major motive is only this to solve the problem of uh, that particular things and uh, there is a very common and a very famous keyword which has been used in our industry which is problem statement so that comes from because you know you are able to solve the problem statement when you have a problem solving skill with you so you have to identify the problem you have to solve the problem by design or by any other uh, sources or whatever the requirement it is so you should have a problem solving skill with you attention to detail is something which uh, i think it has been required in every department but for us it is very important because you know sometimes product fails because of uh, different uh, different reasons because of not uh, paying attention to the detail what user wants okay what you are giving to users uh, people sometimes you know get frustrated with number of clicks which are in the, into the product which are into uh, on website on anything okay and you have to give it like you know you have to reduce clicks 
for the user. The, the, this, this is just one parameter. But the thing is, key attention to detail is very important for you when it comes on to you know delivering a good product to the market. Another one is the most important one, the most important, the business acumen. The thing is, key, you are a designer. Once you are into a product, you have to make the product. That is one responsibility for you. But if you want to deliver the best product, you have to understand what kind of product it is, what kind of business you are into. Because you know, designing a product is just one factor of your job. The other factor of your job is the keeping your revenue, keeping your uh, audience, keeping your uh, you know tractions on the app or any product, whatever you are making. Uh, on a very constant level or rigorously improving it. So for that, you need to have a sense of business, uh, like, you know, what kind of business you are, if you are into e-commerce, if you are into a cybersecurity, if you are into real estate, if you are into fintech, you need to have a knowledge about what kind of business your product is giving to the users or what kind of business your owners or uh, the company is doing so that you can, you know, better, uh, uh, by this knowledge, you can get a better understanding of how you can achieve things with good business goals and also with the satisfaction of your customer or a user. So business acumen is a major criteria of those particular things. Now, when, when it comes on, uh, you know, market expectations, once you reach that, uh, people always get this thing in mind, ki how we can learn product design, because, you know, in order to get this expectation to be touched, you need to understand about product design also. You need to learn product design from different things. So there are multiple uh, ways to learn product design, but I'm going to tell you about the most default ways, which, you know, which have been, uh, are also a very traditional way. Uh, like, you know, people are using it from this very long time. And those are the most effective way of doing those things. So how, what are, are the methods or the ways to learn product design? how you can learn, how you can approach this particular field to get into uh, the particular domain or something. So the first one is the online courses and tutorial. You can go on YouTube. You can, you know, just started looking after different things. And then after, you know, uh, you started uh, doing different certifications uh, from Skillshare, from Udacity, from Audacity, from LinkedIn, from Udemy, from et cetera, et cetera. You can do it from anywhere. So via this online courses and tutorials, you will get an idea about, okay, what is product design? You, you, um, so in a, in a very ballpark number, you will get a theoretical idea about uh, what is product design, how to approach into this field, what are the major factors which are being involved into this particular thing. And also about a zest of key, okay, if you are going to be a product designer, what kind of a responsibility you are going to take care of? And uh, an idea and a, you know, and a blur idea about what kind of problem statement you need to deal with. So from online courses and tutorials, you will get this idea of, I think on a very good level and into a free, free thing. Also, if you go for YouTube or a LinkedIn learning, if you have a premium account over there, design workshops and boot camps, this is, uh, the best way, uh, why, because, uh, these are some things which, uh, Firstly, give you knowledge. What is product design? What you know? How you can achieve this thing? But the particular thing, how you can get into this particular field. Plus, they also improve your networking. You can get, uh, you can meet different people. You can, you know, uh, try to understand how they get into the particular field, how they uh, think like designers right now, and how they are, you know, making up different things uh possible for the company for the problems for, for the problem statement of the user and how they are solving it out so you you can get an idea via boot camps and design workshops if you can get into so uh, this is a, if a a very good effective way uh if you can go with this way of uh, you know getting into product design and learning about product design now this is uh i don't say it is an important factor but i'll say that this is an essential factor you should have this thing in your whole plan of learning product design, which is, uh, you should have a mentor with you so that, that <coughs> I'm really sorry. Mentor can guide you out through each and every barrier you will, you are going to face while preparing yourself to get into this particular field. Okay. Because that particular person is already from, uh, already gone through that particular phase, which you are walking into. 
so he or she can help you out ki okay you know uh, if you're getting problem in uh, understanding about the job okay uh, let let's make out your uh, make out your resume let's make your portfolio a bit enhanced okay how you are going to make things uh, differently he he or she can guide you very easily and you will uh, the best part for you guys having a mentor is ki you have only one person one poc to get your all design problems you know doubts solved on one call or on a video call or on a one on one thing so this is particular something which is which i feel is essential for anybody who are getting into the particular thing now self study and practice obviously this is the most important part in every field okay design is something uh, so ux design when when we talk about user experiences it is something which depends on the kind of task you are getting uh, onto your job or if you are working on your personal project the kind of things you are making it depends on uh, that ki what process you are going to use of uh, like what process of ux design you are going to use into that particular field but when it comes on ui when it comes on uh, you know practicing different processes in ux uh, you know self study and practice is very much important i i remember obviously that you know when i started uh, my career as a ui ux developer designer uh, i used to make uh, you know 40 50 screens a day and i i used to do nothing in my initial weeks of uh, starting i used i just used to copy designs but the, you know that copying designs are not creating my idea to it but uh, it's making me <laughs> much more refined when it comes on using a software it's increasing my speed it's increasing my understanding about the software so practice makes a man perfect here yeah. so you know uh, the uh, the previous three uh, ways of learning product design practice is something which is involved in every phase of yours so you need to have this particular thing ki you need to practice designs every day you need to think like designer you need to solve one problem statement every day so that you can get a zest of your your mind can get adapted to solving a problem very easily and very effectively uh, when it comes on uh, when you get into a real world problem state uh, the other thing is that ki when you are reading books design blogs they can uh, i'll not say they can make you learn things uh, but yes you can get the idea about what is going on into the market okay how different things have been achieved like uh, let's take an example ki uh, let's take the example of airbnb airbnb having is having a very excellent design system google is having a very excellent design system by reading blogs you can get an idea how these people are you know have achieved these things you know uh, what what was their thinking behind uh, you know making this perfect design system making perfect components of different uh, you know visual designs and other things so uh, the below uh, you know the posters are some of my uh, favorite uh, design books which i also refer to you guys don't make me think by steve kirk obviously design of everyday thing on norman it's um, all time favorite it's good into it designing interfaces and you know designing for interactions these are something i think uh, if you are interested into reading the design books you can go for these things you, you will surely love that now uh, after learning things after uh, du during learning things you will get to know that the most important thing for you is making a portfolio because your portfolio is obviously your backbone uh, when it comes on uh, you know showcasing your particular project showcasing your thought process into different things so how you can build a industry ready portfolio and it's not a rocket science for anybody okay it's it's a very simple process you just need to uh, you know showcase your portfolio smartly in front of uh, anybody ever like whoever you are presenting it so the first thing here is ki choose your best project first of all like uh, if you can see if, if you use instagram also instagram is also right now having a pin uh, feature so that you know if you have a post which is you know uh, down to your profile and it's a good post you feel that it it should be on your uh, on your first page of your wall so you can pin it out so just pin out your best works uh, into your portfolio that is something which you should need because you know that's you humans psychologically also 
people the first impression is the last impression so some of your first second third projects are something which uh, from which interviewers or different people are going to make decisions that whether you are uh, a good match or not so uh, always have your best project pinned on your wall second always show your design process i've observed that you know many people right now are making visually impactful designs which is very good for different things but in order to crack your job people market want to understand ki what is your process of designing obviously process design process changes rapidly because it depends on the kind of problem statement you are solving and the resource you are having right now obviously in your hand but the thing is ki whatever project you are showing just show your design process into it ki uh, what uh, from where you have started and where you have landed from there so that people can get into a journey with you like you know if you have uh, if you have a thought in your mind ki let's say uh, i i will make something like i i'll, I'll make a e-commerce website for furnitures okay so this is something which gets gets into your mind you will do some r and d show your r and d what kind of r and d you have done what kind of competitors you have seen uh, online right now present it second just go for uh you know different wireframes different visual designs different uh user research you will conducting uh, different uh, target audience interviews you are doing so just show everything so that people can get a zest ki okay you are getting deep into whatever you are making third is showcase your skill set skill set uh, when you say showcasing your skill set uh, it means that you need to highlight what you are able for let's say if i am a good ui designer i'll try to showcase my ability of making a better user interface uh into my every project if if i'm good into both like ui ux and also i'm technically sounded become a product designer so uh i'll show things parallelly or on on the same weightage but i have to show them um, you know un in, in a very unbiased way if i'm good into ui i'll show my ui on a perfect top notch way i'll show the ux but i'll show it like okay this is something this is a kind of a partial research i have done and there here, here is the main uh, you know results for that particular thing so just be like that showcase your skills very smartly on your portfolio where it comes on that uh, involving real world problems uh, real world examples are something which which i feel sometimes it's not possible uh, into every project but yes if you are having uh, let's say if you're making a e-commerce thing and you are uh, you know giving a one tap uh, a, a one tap buy uh, feature to the people you, you have a button which uh, shows like you know once on, on the click of that button you will just uh, your order will directly get placed you will not uh, not get uh not uh, you you will get rid of every you know entering address of that particular thing entering anything so that is something which amazon has done already so if you're making something if you're copying that also just give reference to amazon so that people will realize that you are data oriented person also that you you have copied something that is something else but you have copied a good stuff that is important for the people because uh, you know you are coming with with good inspirations good examples so that that's what matters to the market the most uh after that you have to explain your roles also i think uh, many of the people forget this thing whenever you are into uh, you know showcasing your portfolio many people do it like okay this whole project is been made by me but sometimes we got stuck into the project stuck into the question answers because we deep inside knows ki the whole work is not done by you only so you have to understand that you know whatever role you have been doing into any project you need to clarify that okay this is the whole product but only the ui part or the design system components parts has been done by me over there so people will get a clear idea ki okay uh, whatever questions they need to ask to you whenever you want to a job interview or something so uh, explaining your role is very much important and the last one is uh, always make your portfolio simple okay whatever project you are showcasing whatever things you are uh, into make it very simple for people to navigate uh, always try to think like that ki whenever you are making a simple portfolio now uh, just make it and give it to the third person if uh, he or she 
navigates uh, to uh, to your whole portfolio without asking you anything then that's a good portfolio because uh, you know uh, whenever you are showcasing your portfolio whenever you are giving uh, you're sharing your portfolio to someone um, probably many situation comes when you are not there to tell them ki, okay now this is something uh, which we have done like that and that that has been written in down so just make it like very simple so that you know even you are not there people can uh, get your portfolio very easily at some stages so uh, next will be some pro tips from my side when it comes on you know getting into job uh, when, when you are doing a job of a product designer when you are giving interviews for a product designer when you are uh, you know into the journey of becoming a product designer how you can uh, you know uh, what are the key things which you need to take care uh, whenever you are into any phase so understanding your users which is i think a very important very very important point for all of us uh, whatever product you are making users pain point your goals users preferences are always be in your mind so that you can you know get into different stuffs understand about ki, okay how you are going to solve that particular problem for the user in a effective way keeping that business goal uh, into your mind so this is the first thing understand your users very properly i trade i trade i trade you know so many people got bored with iteration iterations are something which every designer has been scared of also but never scared of iterations <laughs> iterations are something which you know every time you make a, you enhance you refine your designs it comes out to be good always and uh, i preferably uh, since last 5 years i i'm i'm i think i'm home, uh, only having some screens which have been passed or which are by me or the and the stakeholders in one go i think we have to go for uh, you know one to two iterations every time to come up with the best designs possible for them so uh, you know never been scared about any uh, the iterative designs or the iterative design process uh, stay up to date with design trends it is very important for you to experiment new things uh, so for that uh, i think you need to be updated with different stuffs because you know now uh, when whenever you are making uh, a design uh, there there are particular different uh, type of visual enhancements which you know uh, we as the designers need to be updated let's say um i remember that in 2019 or 20 uh, neomorphism was something which uh, got introduced and uh, when i read about that i i was working on a product at that time and i directly executed it and it comes out to be very good and again uh, rapidly in 22 or 21 i think glass morphism got introduced uh with as, as a design trend and again i have used it so you know uh, these design trends helps you out every time uh, to make your visual research always better to make your uh, you know user experience research always better so uh, that that is the thing why it is very important for you to stay updated with design trends or something so other than that uh, use data to uh, you know uh, inform your decisions uh, you should be data oriented uh, because you know data is something which is directly connected with the users and to the business also so that is something which uh, you know uh, you should be there you should keep in your mind whenever you are making design decisions whenever you are making a flow decision any dec- any kind of decision you are making be it like a data oriented because uh datas are always been helpful for anybody to take decisions effectively and you know faster uh in some ways be open to feedback uh this is something which uh, we uh, as a designer need to develop it in our attitude also uh because you know many times we need to deal with people uh who didn't like our designs who didn't like the iterations which we are showing up to them so uh, for that you need to be open to feedback because sometimes your designs might not be good might not be impressive but the person who are giving you who's giving you feedback might his his feedback might be uh, you know uh, uh, do the job for you so you need to be open to feedback listen to every feedback whatever you are getting from the stakeholder from the users from the from a team or anybody from the things 
and again don't be afraid to exper experiment because you know we as the designers are relying on different experience relying on different things uh, you know to be come out to the world because you know we uh, we are a creative people we you know we got bored with uh, one trend going out for two years so you know don't be afraid to experiment new things into uh, your world whenever you are getting into things keep the big picture in your mind always uh, when so this is important for uh, this is the most important lesson for i think the people who joined working or you know planning to join an early age startup because you know whenever you are uh, join uh, joining early age startup uh, the particular thing was ki you as a user uh, as, as a designer uh, always think like okay this is kind of a problem statement i need to deliver so i need to solve this particular problem statement but if you have a bigger picture in your mind like this problem statement which i'm solving is going to impact what and that impact is going to be impacted at what thing so if the if if the bigger picture is clear in your mind then your small steps are also going to be perfect at every end so have this bigger picture in your mind whenever you are making a product or starting with the product something so understand the business uh, again a very important thing for us understanding a business is something ki you know uh, it is wholly reliable on the product also ki what kind of product what kind of field you are into but before getting into every problem statement or any problem statement just understand what kind of business uh, for what kind of business you are solving this particular problem by this product so you you will get an idea about uh, you know how you are going to solve it like let's say uh, if you are solving something on uh, cyber security so your visions could be like data oriented and at that should be also numbers oriented or you know confidential data oriented or something like that if you're solving something for uh, well, let's say e-commerce then uh, that should be also data oriented but those data depends on different other factors like images are also a data into e-commerce you know uh, your different uh, product name or description listing page or something around data so if you have uh, like you know a clear picture in your mind about the business of that particular product uh, that will be way easier for you to understand and make better product for the company now the last thing um, which i want to look keep learning uh, i think i'm uh, in, in in this five years of experience i'm still learning different things and i think when i'm going to complete my 25 years in design at that time also i'll be learning so never stop learning i i right now also i used to mentor people i used to guide different students but still uh, till now i also get into going and attending different workshops practice new design techniques you know taking up different courses to understand you okay now what is going on uh, right now in the market how i can take uh, how i can take care of these things because you know every day you're going to face a new challenge into your field so you know just don't stop learning about it and keep learning on uh, different things so yeah i think that's all from my side uh, i hope this workshop will be very good uh, and you found it fruitful also rashika over to you yeah uh, i think satyam it was an amazing workshop crisp and to the point so yeah. the i believe the more crisp it is just like design uh it the more value it adds to anyone's life right and even okay. an hour they're going to spend so i think it was amazing in that terms uh and we have quite a few, uh, few questions yeah. uh first of all guys i've shared satyam's profile in the chat itself so you can you know go follow him and learn more from his design journey that would be Uh, you know great and he's a very approachable person <laughs> he'll reach out to you and he'll help you any cool. time any place <laughs> okay so the first question um uh, uh it's from delips to what extent does a product designer need to be familiar with the technology uh, technology in terms of coding both front end and back or back end behind the product they are designing mm -hmm. Uh, so i think uh, dilip uh, yeah being a product designer you know uh, i think uh, the most important thing which you need to know is ki uh, you need to deal with the front end guys more than the back end guys 
first of all mm-hmm. because you know you are going to make visuals for your product and those are the people who are going to make your vision into reality so you need to do a lot of testing with them you need to do a lot of collaborative meetings with them it is always better to know their language at mm-hmm. some aspects because obviously if you know everything about technology then we become a full stack designer and developer which is a very big thing for us also to achieve so i think uh, having a crisp thing crisp uh, information in your mind like html css react angular and different languages for the front end node js php and uh, the most important thing for you uh, for we as a product designer is ki uh, we are data oriented people first of all so the major thing is ki we should know uh, how data is flowing in our particular product and that is something which a back end guy can tell you any time so right. when it comes on a back end thing you should uh, you should always know ki how data is being flowing so let's say uh, if i if i take a very small example uh, let's say uh, if we talk about pro app only i am mm-hmm. definitely sure that uh, you guys are having a dashboard also with you so right, right. whenever people uh, if uh, there so dilip if you can uh, if, if you you know register any inquiry or something via your uh, phone on the pro app uh, that data can directly go to the dashboard and then after i think rashika and the team you know take action on that particular thing so your data is flowing like that it's not directly going to rashika and the team it's going via dashboard so that is something uh, which you need to do whenever you are designing a product so yeah mm-hmm. i think at at some aspects learning having knowledge about uh, coding languages and at some aspect having uh, mm-hmm. knowledge about how data is being flowing is important right also actually we were preparing a course on web development for designers and it was very difficult so we uh, took a poll or a survey within the team and understood like from the developers and the designers both so that there is a better collaboration ah, so they actually. mentioned a few points that uh maybe a little they might know about apis to help them understand mm. how the data actually flows or maybe things like databases right because yeah. sometimes just uh, knowing about apis and databases can help you design like flawless dashboards right that, that one you one you mentioned so exactly. uh, i think that's a great point to add uh next one would be uh, can we see a sample portfolio of a product design uh shelly yeah. uh i think uh, onto behance you can go and see any sample portfolio i have also attached my linkedin onto it from there you can go to my behance also to see uh stuffs i think sample portfolios are nothing man sample portfolio contains dummy stuffs go and see the real one <laughs> so uh <laughs> that, that will be great cool um uh, how do you explain about the way you collaborate with a team in a case study so uh we uh, as a team of people uh, like you know in my current scenarios also i'm working with on a case study of google and uh, you know uh, me and some two or 12 13 designers are working on that uh, when it comes on case study i think uh, you know case study becomes very easy for us to collaborate yaar matlab what role i am uh, doing what what role i am taking care of in that particular project i'll just write a case study on that and what role those 12 13 designers are uh, been doing on that particular thing those uh, guys will write and collectively we come on the same table on uh, when it comes on presenting that particular case study to the board so that is something which is very easy right acha we had a few questions in the chat i think i'm going to pick one or two from there now um yeah. in in the it's from juhi in the interview do the interviewers check the entire working prototype or just the case study do i need to take my laptop and show them the working prototype it will be great if you can take your laptop with them uh particularly uh during an interview uh, an interview wants to see everything to be very frank indian market specifically every interview wants to see everything whatever you have done so let's say if you have if you have uh, you know uh, in one of your screen iteration you have circle and then you have converted in, uh, into other iteration you have converted into mm-hmm. rectangle they also want to know the story of that particular right. thing why you have done it so i think uh, during an interview take your laptop show everything to them okay they are interested in everything hmm 
I think we have two more questions from her itself. She says she's only familiar with Figma at this point, and uh, but no XP XP through and and is quite comfortable with it. Uh, she has made many projects using XP only. Will this hamper my chances of selection? I don't think so. Uh, no. Uh, but no. I think this is the same no. story like me. I started my career with XP only. Uh, mm. got. addicted with figma when i started to be very frank and then after you know uh, uh so uh, i don't know the name who asked it uh, but uh, i think joy so joy i'll tell you something uh, uh, which software you should know uh, the answer is every software because you know you are going to be adapted by the company you are working with so let's say uh, into a company xd is a common designing software so you need to go to for xd into any company figma is important for you then you have to go for figma so my suggestion would be go for every software okay but don't rely on one okay you should be expert of every software and i think in product design we are having three softwares right now xd figma and sketch uh are the major boom softwares for us so i think just uh, learn about uh, learn about these three softwares and you are good to go for that sorry okay. do i need to be familiar with material design and human interface design guidelines a question asked on these in the interview yes so these are something uh, which is very important factors uh, when it comes to different thing because you know material design is from google human interface design is from apple uh the thing is ki uh you know uh, let's say you are making a mobile application you are making it for android mm-hmm. and apple for ios both you need to understand material and hci why because these companies uh, the ios and the android platforms are been working on these design systems only so you need to make uh, mm-hmm. your product uh, from their guidelines so yes you need to understand these things Ooh, okay back to the q and a section um what are the latest movements and trends in product design and how are they influencing the industry twinkle i think latest make uh, glass morphism is the one which i have given you example in my uh, workshop that is something right. which i have came across and uh, they are kind of new ux processes new brutalism new brutalism is something with yeah. i've seen on and uh, if i talk Uh, if i talk about impacting the industry is something else see people are right now uh, going for some sassy stuff okay mm. right now if you can see cred right now if you mm. can see any particular product they are going for sassy things they are not mm. going for something which make it very simple they they keep the ui simple they keep the visual simple so that you can understand the particular thing but their approach are very sassy so i think these right. new design trends are a helping hands for these particular things to make it more sexy so you know uh, just learn about it uh, having a, if if you get an update on uh, these particular new trends just learn it you know it, it's easy for you cool um one more from shelly design trends versus timeless design any thoughts give me a second uh, i think i've lost something yeah Well, there's a question: Design trends versus timeless designs. I think trends. Go for it. You will you will get a good product which is accepted by the market very easily because people are updated with that. Hmm. And maybe timeless design in terms of um, maybe someone who is you know if you are designing for the audience maybe say fifty plus or forty five plus. something like that which they are already aware of it i think it's again so again it depends on the problem statement right. and the target audience you are solving it like right, you know right, if, right. I'm making, if i'm revamping newspaper into a pro- mobile application i will probably go for a timeless design because you know i hmm. know you are going to use that product so right. that is the thing it depends on the statement and the audience you are catering right. right and i think saas companies generally go for the time this design <laughs> yes 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 saas dashboards these yeah. are uh, these things are on timeless only um okay uh, what are some of the current or emerging challenges or opportunities for ux ui designers in today's market i think there is no challenge into it 
मतलब सो दिस इज माई पर्सनल ओपिनियन ऑन दिस दिस चैलेंज देर इज समथिंग की राइट नाउ इफ यू इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गेट इन टू कम्पिटेटिव मार्केट ऑफ यू आई यू एक्स then your brain should be that much of creative that you can handle up things so let's say again just like rashika said that saas companies or the dashboard companies if you're working for dashboard there is no emerging challenge you know people are having same data flows people are having same mm-hmm. things in their hands probably one two problem statements you will come across that you know that makes more sense to you that those are unique and you have to spend more time on that but rest things are you know going good on that particular things so uh, i think uh, there is no current uh, if 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 this talks about learning ui ux there is no emerging challenge opportunity obviously no because this particular field is right now evolving in the world and i think india is not yet fully accepted it but the time will right. come yes. and i think people like you are going to making it happen so could <laughs> <have been. laughs> thank you i mean we are just trying Uh, what are your top ten design principles uh, across different design systems that you follow regularly? That, that keeps to be very long answer, but I will tell you something. Uh, so my personal way of working is, I never remember design principles. I work on problem statements. Okay, I know things. Ki okay, uh, you know uh, what are the basic uh, stuffs. and where this particular element should be there and what are the basic flows so to be very frank uh, once you get into field once you started practicing things on the once you solving real world problem you will also forget about these principles or something these are the basic terminologies which you need to know while entering into the market and to stay up to date with the design trends but these are something which are not going which you are personally also not going to use it regularly i think it is the highlight of the entire workshop that you said work on the real problem real problems yes right. um, as a product designer how much should we charge from a client in 2023 depends on the project <laughs> if somebody has given me a whole product then i'll charge differently if somebody is giving me only two screens to make i'll charge different hmm. i But hope is, that is... i hope this question is related to freelancing right 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 matlab <laughs> if you are into working in a company then this is not a question for you no 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 so is there any like average size because we have received this question in earlier workshop we had on freelancing as well uh, considering com- countries like us they have a fair high pricing than considering country like india or developing nation so is there any average pricing that is going on it would be like so con- india in india what i have observed is ki uh, so if i tell you about mobile application designing the average rate of every designers who are having 3 4 years of experience in the market they have been charging around 1000 to 1200 bucks early, early. for one screen for one screen oh so one yeah, screen yeah because you know uh, whoever wahi hai ki uh, and usa and if you are comparing usa and india mm-hmm. then i think there is a currency difference also at some correct times. correct so i like you know bab i have also given one talk on like you know freelancing so mm-hmm. i will over there go and get foreign clients that will <laughs> i will make you rich <laughs> but uh, you know in india also uh, i think uh, 1000 to 1200 is something which is the average price uh, which every designer of 3 to 4 year of experience used to charge it okay um what is your go to resolution in pixels for mobile desktop app design go depends depends for what mobile i'm designing so for android i have different uh, dimensions uh, ios i have different dimensions uh, ios into ios also there are particular categories let's say iphone se and iphone mm-hmm. 14 are having different dimensions so it depends i think in uh, if you want to get an idea about uh, resolutions uh, go to figma select frame and on the right section you will get the whole list of whatever frame you want okay i think we have the last question here too who should be responsible for responsive design ux ui designer or mostly front end why i ask is because most of my front end designers clip please give me designs so the resolution also 
so when you talk about responsive design uh, obviously being a designer you have to give design into both the resolution desktop and mobile both so that the developer so why we are giving it is ki uh, front end guy is the only one who is going to make it responsive uh, but the thing is ki they should know the maximum and minimum range uh, mm -hmm. and that is been given by a designer so let's say on to desktop you are making a website on 1920 and 1080 and mm. on the mobile you are making it on 351 and so else to the mm. high so mm. that is the minimum and the maximum thing which a uh, developer should know so for mm. that uh, developers always want ki okay give me mobile design also for that particular thing so both are responsible mostly front end yes right um a three projects two personal and one client project good enough to start applying for a job yes i think one project is also sufficient if it is excellent cool uh i think we are done with the questions if someone has any more questions we still have 2 to 3 minutes they can pour in but uh, satyam in the meantime can you help me understand how was your design, design journey like i generally ask from all our uh, workshop instructors so like how did you develop the interest in design and figured out that this is something uh you know you want to pursue so i think uh, it's it's not a very fascinating story but uh, i think in my college back to days i was in youth club and i used to make posters flyer banners at photoshop and illustrator for our mm -hmm. youth club cultural festival technical festivals so from there i think i got interested in photoshop and illustrator at some end and uh, mm -hmm. then after you know uh, going forward you know having some ideas from seniors i got this term mm -hmm. in my class which is ui ux and mm -hmm. uh, then i got so, so I, i have started learning about ui ux because i found this term very sexy to say mm -hmm. in front of public yeah i am a ui ux designer so uh, <laughs> from there and i started learning it from google uh, mm -hmm. okay what are the things and what are different uh, you know type of stuffs which i used to do while learning it uh, i think the most uh, i think exciting thing which i have learned about uh, which makes me passionate about this role was ux user experience mm. ui was something which i feel is a game of tool that mm. is uh, but ux is something which is a game of mind which is a total game of mind matlab mm. ui is also a game of mind but it involves excellency in tool also but for ux i think uh, your mind should be so sharp and to the point uh, mm. for the people so from the understanding ux i got the thing ki okay uh, this is something which uh, i am excited to learn about uh, then after uh, i you know because i was in college i was having no experience in design so people have suggested me to okay just get a go get a real job in uh, design a uh, get an internship and just understand ki what market is going on right now and other things so i joined a company in delhi uh, to you know uh, do an internship and that company was i think rep india uh, which is i think uh, delhi's uh, top most digital marketing agency so hmm. from there i i have served multiple clients in my two months of internship uh, hmm. my major clients were canon edge hazuri lal hmm. so hmm. i used to go into client meetings also at some end uh, so from there i think uh, uh, you know some kind of a very big interest got into my picture i was doing btech at that time my father hmm. was also against it ki because i got a very good offer in uh, coding also <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, i'm good in front end so hmm. uh, so i got a offer and my father was also engineer so he wants to okay just go into that and other things but uh, that happens ki okay he he give me he just told me okay give it a shot if you want to go and uh, just get it so i i remember we had a deal uh, with my father ki okay i have 45 days left to join my that development offer wala company so in 245 days uh, he go he get me a deal ki okay if you get a job in design uh, with a good package just go into your field if not hmm. then for that development job so that 45 days uh, converted me into a wholesome product designer because mm. at that time i was learning very frequently very rapidly mm. just to get reviews and other things so yeah that was my journey of getting into designs and you know starting with things.
I think we as engineers work best under pressure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yes, my my best learnings are having came from those forty five days only. Forty five days. Uh, which I which I also remember it now. So right. that is something which uh, excited me a lot whenever I talk about it. Cool. Uh, okay. In the meantime, we have have we had three more questions. Uh, I want to apply for a UX research job. I'm good with my visual design, but not great. My research skills are good enough for entry level job. What kind of companies should I go for? You can go for any company. Uh, Johi. Uh, the thing is, keep uh, don't uh, if, if you are in your initial days, no. Uh, don't uh, categorize which kind of company you want to apply yeah. firstly because uh, at at this point of time you don't have any real life experience of you know big real market experience of a product designer or a ux designer only mm. so just go for any company uh, just go for experience and i think uh, visual designs uh, great so uh, it's it's a very impossible point for anybody to say ki okay i am a great visual designer every designer fails uh at every stage of their life and pass also so we have a very roller coaster ride uh until we are you know retiring so uh that is something ki, okay you you want to go you can go for any company but the kind of companies uh, don't go for it. i think that's a great great advice okay next question i don't think so you should be answering what's your current salary <laughs> 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 I think uh, I have uh, I am able to arrange my three time meals a day. <laughs> I'm really sorry, anonymous attendee. <laughs> I think I also make some frequent trips. That's good enough to survive. <laughs> <laughs> so these are just eat and travel. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the basic necessities, you see. Yeah. <laughs> okay last question which company did you do internship from could you please tell us the company name oh <laughs> uh, it's, it's rep india r e p uh, india so you can search it on google thank you juvi thank you thank you so much and so them i think it brings us to the end of today's workshop it was thank great you. having you here and I think it was the quickest and the most crisp workshop I have ever hosted. And uh, to the I point, have, question. I think when we have when we are making this, we have discussed this only. Ki, okay, just <laughs> make this one because you know uh, when people say ki uh, I'll guide you when to become an industry ready designer or how to become right. it, it's a very long chapter. You know, boot camps are going to happen on this particular thing. So I right. think uh, if. We want to give it, give us list of what are the psychological things which you need hmm. to develop uh, while becoming a product designer, or something which we have covered into this workshop. Cool, awesome. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna make a small announcement. So guys, we're starting and filling in the seats for the next batch of pro school work, pro school, uh, which if you know is an offline UI UX training program that we have started. I've filled in the link in the chat section you can just go check it out and someone from our team will reach out to you once you fill in the form and satya thank satim thank you so much and i don't know why people keep on calling you satya in the chat is it your nickname are the people no. they know you from your previous no. mentorship session i don't know i think some of them spell it right but uh, <laughs> satya is not my name it's satyam guys so anyways matlab uh, the people people call me people call me with the satya <laughs> that's also a good name i think i should be taking it as my name <laughs> awesome thank you so much for uh, giving this thank precious you. time and your insights and thank you for yeah, inviting have me have a great weekend thank you guys bye bye thank you guys bye bye have a great weekend